Ah, oh, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the land of cat learning and knowledge, as you can tell, because I am in a library, and every single one of these books are about cats. Anyhow, today we're going to talk about uh, a word that I am particularly fond of because when I say it, it tickles my mouth and rolls around like a fine wine that I do not want to spit out. And it is called tortitude. Ooh, tortitude. I could say that all day. Tortitude. Tortitude. <laughs> oh, it's the small things in life. But really, what is tortitude and why is it such a common phrase? Well, before we consult the Cat Daddy Dictionary, we have to know what a torty is. Correct? Correct. A torty is a coat color defined as the GG coat color, which encompasses torties and calicos as well. It is a mix of orange, black, and white coloration. Whether there are splotches of black, brown, orange, and white, whether they come in squiggles or stripes or anything else, that combination of colors equals torty. Or if there is more than 20% white on the cat's body, calico. Didn't know that? Now you know. Why is it so prominent in the cat lexicon? The zeitgeist. Tortitude. <laughs> well, that is why we have this, which I have worked my entire life in writing. The Cat Daddy Dictionary. And what is it actually that tortitude is defined as? A portmanteau of tortoiseshell and attitude, referring to the common stereotype that tortoiseshell cats have a feisty, independent, and strong-willed personality. To be used in a sentence, my sweet Sally showed such tortitude when she walked away from fresh tuna that I had spent much money on. My sweet, sweet, spoiled Sally. Also, we have the Torby, which is a mix of tabby and torty. Equal parts splotch and uh, stripe. Stripe and splotch. Splotch and stripe. Also, there's the dilute torty, which means that there is the coloration of a blue cream or gray uh, instead of just orange, black, white, and brown. Hmm, interesting and alluring. Don't you want to find out more about what a torty is? Or does that actually make it sound like they're not nice cats? That would be unfortunate because let me tell you, I know some wonderful torties and these torties come from around the world. One very fascinating fact you might not know about torties is that they are female. Yes, only one in 3,000 torties and calicos are born male and if they are male, out, they are sterile. So that is why the calicos and the torties are female. One thing that is absolutely shocking and, in my estimation, unacceptable is the notion that torties are, because of their splotchy nature, unattractive. In fact, dare I say, ugly. Well, the commands of Southeast Asia say that that is absolutely not the case, as tortoiseshell cats are descended from goddesses that came from the lotus flower. Hmm. Well, we around here agree wholeheartedly. As a matter of fact, we reached out to our Team Cat Mojo members around the world to show us how beautiful torties and calicos could be, and here are just some of them. Not to play favorites or anything, but if you can, then you should. And this little beauty is Luna. Luna belongs with Team Galaxy's Lindsay Robbins. Luna is indeed a dilute torty. Dilute meaning that she has the bluish cream gray coloration. I sound very smart, don't I? It's the accent. And this little lovely tortie, this is Sela. Sela who belongs with her person, Barb, who gave her these wonderful wheels to help her along in life because she has cerebellar hyperplasia and is also blind. But a wonderful life she still has with Barb. Behold the power of Zelda. And one of the tricks that her person, Andrea, has taught her is how to levitate little green leafy toys on the top of her head. Now, if you take a look at Zelda, you might think to yourself, well, she's not a tortie, she's a black cat. But no, you'd be wrong. Little bitty spots of brown on her say, I am tortie, hear me roar.
And so many more torties sent in for our consideration here. Look at how beautiful they are. It is a parade of tortitudinality, and I am proud to present it to you exclusively. And if you would like to send in either video clips or pictures of your torties or your calicos, send them right here, and we might just feature them in our next video. Now, uh, however smart I may seem here, uh, I am just an arbiter of the adorable and the cute, but not truly the facts. I have reached the end of the rope of knowledge, as it were, and it's now time for me to pass it on to that guy who thinks he's smarter than me and in some ways might be, but he is not as dashing. Regardless, let's send it over to him. Well, you know, I do appreciate Nigel's uh, confidence in my knowledge base, but I don't know. I really don't. So just as he sent it over to me once his knowledge rope ran out, my rope is running out. So I'm going to send it over to my good friend, Michael Delgado, PhD, who's going to pick up the rope here. Michael. Aha. Now. I get to put you on the spot, Michael Delgado. You had co-authored a study um, back in what, 2017? 2012. Was it 2012? It was 2012, yeah. We published a study that was asking people to rate different personality traits in different colors of cats. So we just wanted to see, do people kind of have preconceived notions that orange cats are one way and black cats are another way and tortoiseshell cats are a different way? You know, they, they tended to rate orange cats as friendly. They tended to rate tortoiseshell cats as a Aloof, intolerant was the other um, label they got ascribed to them. Two other studies have also found, again, based on surveys of cat owners, that people report that tortoiseshells are more aggressive in certain contexts, but it does seem to be this kind of common thread that people come back to. We know people use the term tortitude for a reason, and the question is, is this you know, is, is coat color destiny or is it a bias that people come into their relationship with a tortoiseshell cat with, or is it a little bit of both? Do you feel like the term tortitude is an attempt of endearing certain behavior or is it more destructive and, and, and could possibly lead to higher euthanasia rates of, of torties? I do worry about the term because we know personality is not just genetics. It comes from your socialization. It comes from the environment you live in. Um, so so let's not just say, oh, if they're a torty, then there are going to obviously be problems. Let's just remember that you uh, live with torties, yes? I have three. And their names are? Coriander, Ruby, and Professor Scribbles. And yeah. I've lived with torties and calicos and I mean, the two of us combined have probably had a thousand torty clients. It's real, isn't it? Come on. I think there's something there. And again, I think that some of it is the female cat traits that maybe we see. And, you know, maybe female cats are a little smarter or, um, you know, there's there's different problems females have to solve in nature. You know, the thing is that people. males are stupid. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> but, you know, females have to protect their offspring. They have every right to be more concerned about threats in their territory. And so we can't just expect that, you know, because our cats live in homes, that all of those instincts just go out the window, even right. though they're spayed or they don't have kittens. So I think that we have to also just understand where these behaviors might come from and how we can work with them. So if your cat does have tortitude, whether they're a torty or not, you have to understand how to interact with a cat who overstimulates quickly or has play aggression or is challenging at the veterinary office. So you can help them be their best. Genetics is not destiny. Um, there's many factors that contribute to a cat's personality. So don't judge a kitty by their coat color. But do you subscribe to the concept that the plural of anecdote is data? I do, actually. I, I think that that's always the starting point for research is that someone's made observations that made them ask a question. So to that end, tortitude is real. I think there's at least a little bit of tortitude out there. Thank you, Jackson. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, smart person, a.k.a. Michael Delgado, Ph.D. It's great to have that perspective, because if we accept the fact that a lot of torties are more reactive, easily to get overstimulated, we can still do something to help them in the same way that we would help any of our other cats who have different tendencies. 
When it comes to cats that are easily overstimulated, you can get ahead of it. It's not gonna come out of the blue. You're going to see certain signs that uh, my tortie is getting to the edge of stimulation here. And we'll see that through tail, it, whether the tail is just starting to give you a little bit of this, or whether it's starting to graduate more into this, you are being sent a very clear sign. And as I have said, in I think just about every video that I've ever made, play with your cat, play with your tortie, play with your tortie because that way you can get that energy out in a productive way. Not only does it bring out that sort of staticky energy out of her body, it increases confidence at the exact same time. But with cats that are easily overstimulated, sometimes the environment itself does it. Maybe you've got toddlers around the house who are just screaming and making noise, or dogs that are barking, and they could be reactive to those noises as well. You can build vertically in the rest of your home so that she has a place to go uh, where she can watch the goings-on but not feel swallowed by them. Don't forget, you know, for any cat, having to compete with floor space can be really, really stressful. But if we think about torties as being just a little bit more on edge to begin with, there's a way through it. Really watch out when it comes to catnip. Catnip is great for certain cats, and the cats that I call the happy drunks, they're the ones who get some catnip and they're rolling around and they're getting sleepy and they're like, I love you, man, and they're gone. And then you've got the mean drunks, which are the ones where once they get catnip in their system, they just go to a different place. So if that natural state is to be overstimulated, that's gonna happen more easily. And so so you do want to watch out that catnip will actually make your torty more aggressive and set her up for failure. Now one thing that you can use that's not catnip or something that can actually be seen as a stimulant is flower essence remedies which I have been working with and have been formulating for like 25 years. A couple of the formulas that I think will really help your tortie, this one is called Hyper Helper. And this is something that you would just put in water or wet food or apply topically every day. Now I know Hyper Helper sounds weird because that sounds like, oh, I've just got a kitten who's bouncing off the ceilings. It's about putting a little bit of a stop between thought and action and energetically this has uh, worked really well for me throughout the years. And then we've got the all together, all in one, like gotta have this in your house anyway, is Stress Stopper, and Stress Stopper is for those moments where energetically your tortie has hit the ceiling, and we need to just bring down that temperature a little bit, uh, just applying this topically, a couple of drops in the palm of your hands and a pet, and that should help just bring her down a little bit and give her a not fighting chance. <laughs> So there's some really important things that I want to circle back to here uh, based on everything we've been talking about and our conversation with Michael today. We, we have talked about today about how tortitude can be used in an endearing way of saying, I love my torty and this is just part of her and I belong to a club of, of people who love these animals. And then we have the other side of this that Michael and I both talked about where it's real that the perception and the words that go along with the perception, stop these animals from being adopted, make them stick around in shelters longer, and actually can contribute to higher euthanasia rates of these beautiful torties. We do have to watch out, and we do have to watch out how we use words like intolerant, or aloof, or spicy. Let's not forget that there's data, there's studies, there's uh, multiple anecdotal studies that say that people see white cats and they think of them as more shy, or that bicolored cats like black and white or gray and white cats are seen as more aggressive, that orange cats are seen as our Dennis the Menace, like that they play all the time. Is there truth in any of these? Some science points to yes, in the same way that some science points to yes about tortitude, but we still have to be really careful and make sure that we're not propagating stereotypes that are damaging. And let's also, finally, let's remember that none of those guys, whether it's Dennis the Menace or the Tuxedo or the White Cat, have a name associated with them that could be perceived as destructive. It's not like the black and white has tuxitude. <laughs> or that we call the orange cat Dennis the Menace. Although really, if I had my way, 
Once again, I want to just thank Michael Delgado for showing up here again. You have got to check out her blog, whatyourcatwants.com. There's just so much great information. I check it out on a weekly basis because I always learn something from Michael. And there's always something to learn about torties. And to that end, make sure that you check out our friend Ingrid King's website. And it's, it's entitled Purrs of Wisdom, but just go to ingridking.com to learn all about torties and a lot of other stuff as well. Both links are down in the description so go visit those guys don't forget everybody subscribe to the channel give us a nice thumbs up but the most important thing that you can do is tell us what you want to see on this channel what have we missed what are things that maybe you don't agree with like maybe you think that i am inherently anti torty i don't know why you would think that but maybe you do and i still want to hear from you let's get conversations going that's what community is all about all right everybody yes tortitude real yes not real yes Confusing, hopefully less so than it was about 15 minutes ago. And in the meantime, put some love on your torty, your calico, or your striped, spotted, white or black, or Dennis the Menace. Put some love on all of them right now, as well as putting some love on each other. Spread the light, the love, and the mojo. Yeah.